For most people, science is limited to education, but science is a part of our day-to-day -day life that is used by almost everything that is alive to some extent or the other. Generally, science is considered to be a little difficult to understand. Rocket science is a special category of science that is considered to be the most difficult part of science to understand. The term rocket science flies around every now and then to describe one of the most difficult complicated things in this planet to understand or in this universe. But I completely disagree. I believe rocket science is definitely one of the easiest part of science to understand and I'm going to prove it throughout this discussion. And there's absolutely no doubt that it is one of the most interesting part of science to understand. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ashish Nanjan. I'm a former ISRO scientist and today I'm beginning a new series of videos on rocketry. The topic of discussion today is three misconceptions regarding space technology regarding rocket science. Let us begin the video. The first misconception that most people have is Newton's third law. Most people think that it is Newton's third law that helps the rockets fly. You push off something that something pushes back on you and you go to fly. But it does not work like that. You can understand pretty quickly by understanding that there is nothing in space from which you can push off from. And that was the first thing going around people's head when scientists were working on rockets. A lot of people were even making fun of scientists who were working on these projects because they were saying that even a third standard student knows that Newton's third law and you need something to push off from and in space there is nothing like that. So rockets can never work. That's what they said. But it is not the Newton's third law that makes the rocket fly. It is the simple principle of conservation of linear momentum that makes the rocket fly. Mass into velocity is conserved in one direction. I'm going to explain that on the board. Now you see this is the conservation of linear momentum. For example, this is your rocket and it is having some mass of m1. If it throws out a mass m2 outside, and it is getting a velocity, let us say it is throwing it out with a velocity of v2, then it is must by the conservation of linear momentum that it gains a velocity of v1, only then the momentum is conserved in x direction, this is the plus x, this is the minus x. If you are having the momentum of m1 v1 in plus x direction, you have to have a momentum of m2 v2 in minus x direction. That way, if they are both equal, we are not having any change of linear momentum in that direction. You can see over here that this mass m2 is definitely going to be much lesser than mass m1. Why? Because initially, the rocket itself is going to carry this mass so that it is thrown out later. Now, if that is the case, then what will happen? Definitely this mass is much much lesser, m2 is much much lesser than m1, which means that v2 has to be much much greater than v1. And that is exactly what we do in rockets. The mass propellant actually after burning, it is thrown out at a very high velocity and by very high velocity, I mean supersonic velocity. So that is why you see the nozzles of the outlet of the rocket engines as a diverging have you seen it like this and definitely you have not seen it like this i'm extremely sorry like this okay and on top it will be having an engine i'm going to be talking about liquid liquid engines and solid engines very soon but this is a diverging passage so in supersonic you are having throat over here m mach number will be equal to one when it gets supersonic you will be needing a diverging passage to have increasing velocity as it flows through it. So it is pretty simple. It is not the Newton's third law. It is conservation of linear momentum. But when it is on ground, both are working. Actually over there, the total thrust produced by any engine will be having two parts. Number one, that is pressure thrust. The pressure multiplied by area will give you force. That is going to give you the reaction force. And the second one is momentum thrust that we have studied right now. We are going to have rate of change of momentum that is going to give you the force, right? So in ground both will be acting, but when it's space, only momentum thrust is working. So I believe that I cleared the first misconception. The second misconception that most people have is the zero gravity principle. Now the weightlessness is something that you must have seen on television at some point or the other when the astronauts are in the orbit or in space, they're just flying around, no weight is going on. They can just move anyway, like a 3D object in space with six degree of freedom. 
You must be thinking that that is because of zero gravity. Maybe in space gravity does not work. That is why the weight is not applicable for them because weight is equal to mass into gravitational acceleration, right? So maybe there is no gravity. Well, everything in this universe is experiencing gravitational field. If the astronaut, if they just go into the orbit of Earth, if they are not feeling the gravity, how come the moon which is so far away is still feeling the gravitational action of Earth and is staying in the orbit of Earth? Earth is in, under the gravitational action, action of the sun. Sun is also under some gravitational action. We are going to talk about that. Definitely the astronauts are under the gravitational action. But it is not the concept of zero gravity. It is the concept of weightlessness. I'm going to explain it right now. Okay guys, here we go. This is our beautiful planet Earth. Should be blue, but never mind. It is red for today. Now, from here, if you toss anything, it goes up and it comes down. Whatever goes up, comes back down. You must have heard at some point or the other. Let us say we increase the range of this projectile motion. We throw it like this, right? It falls over here. Now, will you agree that when let us say a person is tossed like this, okay, God forbid, but let us say we have tossed a person like this with a catapult and the person is over here. Will that person feel any weight at this point? Yes or no? That person will not feel any weight because that person is already under the action of gravity. So if you're already under the action of gravity, extra force cannot be witnessed, right? So that person is not going to feel any force of gravity because that person is already under the force of gravity. Now let us understand a little bit more. Now let us increase that range that much. In that all of this region there is no external force other than the force of gravity and because of that only it is coming down, right? So that person, if there's a person over here, will be feeling the force of gravity and because of that, only that person is coming back to the surface of Earth. So no extra force is required because it is already under the action of gravity. That projectile motion, if it keeps on increasing, it eventually becomes an orbit. And in orbit also, you are in that free fall motion only. And that is why you are already under the action of gravity. That is why you do not feel any more gravitational force, right? It won't be 2G, right? Just because you are flying. So that is the prime reason that you are feeling weightlessness. It is not because lack of gravity. It is the concept of free fall. You are falling. You are already under the action of gravity. That is why there is no extra action of gravity, right? It is because of your weight itself that you are falling. And uh, that is why you are able to move here and there because you are already falling. Try and jump and come down, right? You will be weightless for a fraction of a second. Now, I want to explain a little bit about how human beings simulate these things. Uh, you can see a lot of videos available by ESA, that is European Space Agency. They have made a lot of parabolic tests. So what people do to train astronauts and even to do a lot of microgravity tests, they are going to take off a plane and they are going to have a parabolic motion and then come back and in this region you will be having free fall now a lot of people have misconception that the plane actually goes like this and then it shuts off and then it is literally falling you do not always need to fall vertically to face the weightlessness you can all you can have is a projectile motion just like a catapult you will take off the plane will be running its engine and at somewhere over there the engine will be cut off and because of that, its automatic motion will be throwing it in this direction. So it is almost like you toss something up, right? So over here, you are having only the action of gravity. There is no other external force. And that is why you will be feeling weightlessness over here. And after some time, the plane's engine will restart and you will be safely landed, right? So this is the simple principle of weightlessness. It is not because of the lack of gravity it is because of the free fall nature okay the third and probably the most common misconception maybe you already knew the first two ones but this one there's high probability that you did not know this now i only found out about this once i joined isro and one of the very senior isro scientists explained this 
to the whole class. So what is the principle of escape velocity? Now everyone at some point or the other, even before senior secondary, has studied the escape velocity is somewhere around 11 km per second, right? Now most people think that if you reach 11 km per second, you lift off and you'll be flying in space forever because you have escaped the gravity of Earth. True, you have escaped the gravity of Earth. Another misconception is that every time we launch a rocket from the Earth's surface, we have to reach the escape velocity. It is not true. Most of the time when the launches are there, for example, if you have to launch a satellite into the orbit, you do not have to reach the escape velocity. You just have to reach somewhere around five to six kilometers per second. On the other hand, if you have to do interplanetary mission, for example, if you have to go to Mars, right? in that case, you have to definitely reach the escape velocity, right? Now, the thing that most people do not understand is if you are going to, let us say you reach 11.2 km per second, you left the surface of Earth, it is not like you are going to keep on flying away. You are going to leave the surface of Earth, but still under the action of the gravity of Sun. So you are going to leave the Earth, move along with Earth around the Sun. Now how to leave the gravitational field of Sun? you will have to reach 42 km per second, that is the escape velocity of gravitational field of Sun from Earth's surface. If you are on Sun's surface, it is 600, above 600 km per second. So definitely go on Sun's surface, it will be most difficult thing to get out, get out of even though you are capable of withstanding the heat over there, right? And what is the escape velocity from, from Moon? It is just above 2 km per second and that is why it is very easy to land on moon and from moon to earth you are going to require very less fuel and that is what they did in that moon mission the first few moon missions that they did coming back back from moon is pretty simple you are not going to need a lot of propulsion to do that you understand so a lot of people do not know this i'm going to explain a little bit of this this is your lovely sun, source of all the energy. Let us say, this is Earth, it is revolving. You have a escape velocity of 11.2 km per second. You have escaped the Earth, then you are going to move, let us say this and this, this is you. After you have reached escape velocity, this is the Earth, then this is going to be the motion. If you have escaped that also, then you are going to be outside. But how far? Will you reach infinity? No sir, not yet. Because a lot of people do not know this also, that the sun is not stationary. Shocked. Sun is not stationary, my friends. Sun is also moving. About what? About the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Sun is continuously revolving itself. Okay, that is a little bit confusing. Let me increase the confusion level to a little bit more. Sun itself is moving. Now, how is Earth moving around it? Earth is almost moving like this trying to catch the sun every time. You understand? This is your motion right now. You are spinning around the Earth's axis. You are revolving around the sun's axis. And that axis of the sun itself is moving. You understand? It is a little bit mind-blowing, but definitely easy to understand. And that is what I wanted to say. All of the rocket science, everything in it, except just one thing, that is timing of GPS. Only timing of GPS will require Einstein's physics, that is theory of relativity. Everything else can be explained by the primitive Newton's law. It's as simple as that. It is probably the simplest part of science. It's just said to be complicated, not that difficult. So that is why anyone can understand. And if you could not understand anything that I explained out of these three, you can comment it down below. Let us conclude what we just studied. Newton's third law. It is not the Newton's third law. It is conservation of linear momentum. Weightlessness. Zero gravity. It is not the zero gravity. Gravity is still acting. It is just the concept of free fall. Escape velocity. I'll reach infinity. You will not reach infinity. You reach the escape velocity of Earth. You are going to leave the gravitational action of Earth but still be in gravitational action of Sun. If you have any more suggestions regarding what are your confusions regarding rocket science, you, could not, you cannot understand what is this, what is this. You have seen it somewhere in the televisions, but you cannot just figure out why we are moving around the Earth until we increase the orbit and then we reach the orbit of Moon and then we decrease the orbit over there. Anything, any question that you have, 
comment it down below i'll be happy to clear it out and i hope that you like this video hit the thumbs bu thumbs up button we, uh, we want to make it big so that more and people find out about this and we build a community about rocket science and rockety and we all learn and we all grow in the comment section i want a healthy discussion about what you think about rocket science what are your questions maybe some of the other enthusiasts space enthusiasts can put their answers over there also so let us discuss and that's about it guys see you next time till then bye